starting off with the first pro tip, as you guys can see, we have a blue AR, a shotgun, a sniper, and two types of heals. We have a med kit, and then we also have a shield potion. Now, this is what usually a lot of people's setups look like. Sometimes maybe they'll have none of these, and they'll have a double shotgun instead. But for this case right here, I did not find a pump shotgun here, so this is exactly what I'm rocking. This is what I normally would rock. Now, a lot of people like to separate their inventory with, like, categories. Like, basically, you're, everyone's going to have their AR usually in the first slot. A lot of people end up doing this so they keep their AR in the first slot and then the shotgun in the second slot and then their sniper in the third slot or fourth slot because they keep all their weapons right next to each other so that way when they're switching they have their weapons right here ready to go now sometimes it sucks like for instance say we do want to rock a double pump let's pretend this is a pump shotgun and we have basically our AR we have our two shotguns and then we have our sniper rifle and our shields now what sucks about this setup having your weapons organized by like these are all weapons so we're gonna have the weapons first and then the shields next some people make this mistake but a pro tip is to put the sniper at the very end no matter what it is even if this is shield pots or grenades or anything like that whatever this slot is right here it doesn't matter what it is always have your assault rifle all the way at the far left and your sniper rifle all the way at the far right and then of course you always want to have your shotguns right next to each other so that way you can actually double pump on console it's a little bit easier now you're gonna see PC people they can have it however they want because they have keybinds so anything like this they could still double pump just like this because they don't have to go through each one to get to the certain object. Now with that being said, back to the sniper. The reason you're gonna wanna have the sniper here is because you're gonna see a lot of pro PC players, like say for instance that Bush is somebody, I take the shot and you're gonna see them switch to their AR instantly to, to finish it off. Say I hit him for 160 damage. I can take one shot and finish him off in an instant, you guys. You're gonna see a lot of pros do that. What they'll do is say that tree's a person, they'll hit the tree and they'll switch and just light it up with their AR so that way they can finish it. Cause sometimes you'll get a, hit, a body shot and it'll only be a hit marker and you need something to finish them off. Now, if you have the AR, the sniper rifle over here, it's gonna be a little bit harder cause once I take this shot, I have to switch over twice just to get to the AR, so it's a lot quicker to have the sniper rifle. In the, the last slot, I actually learned this from one of you guys, subscribers commented in one of my videos telling me to do this, and I've done it ever since. It always helps, and it makes you a better sniper, because not only are you going to snipe people and then switch your AR and shoot them real quick, but your teammates are going to be like, dang, you're really knocking people extremely quick. It's going to help out in situations where maybe three teams are, or two, three people are pushing you and your team, and you need help. Like, say a sniper rifle, yes, I can snipe him, get him weak, but then I need the AR to finish him if I don't don't get that headshot with the sniper rifle so that's pro tip number one the next pro tip that not a lot of people really like to do but as you guys can see I just walked into this house the first thing when you walk into a house is you want to find a weapon if you don't have weapons if you do have weapons and you're safe don't worry about this but if you're just looting every time you walk into a house hit every single piece of furniture except maybe this furniture right here because that'll only give you seven but all this stuff right here this will give you a lot of wood, you guys. We can literally go into the houses and just hit nothing but the wood, break down the walls and stuff like that. And by the end of it, some houses can actually give you up to 200 wood just by hitting the furniture in that house, which I don't know about the the material nerf that's gonna be happening in the future, but like say for instance, we hit this. That gave me eight wood just hitting one of these. So hit the, hit the other one, why not? It's quick. It's real easy and it gets you a lot of wood. So for instance, right now we have 425 wood. Let's see how much wood we can actually get out of this house right here. Right when we walk in, hit the kitchen because the kitchen always has a lot of wood. Two chairs, the TV doesn't give you that much but you might as well hit it because why not? Move up to the next floor, more furniture to hit. We got a chair, barely gives us any, but four will still add up. And then right there, see sometimes it'll give you five. We use 10 right there, but we're gonna get the 10 back right here by breaking this. And we have that wood, open the chest. And now we have 511. So that house right there gave us 60 wood. Now it might not seem like that much, but if this house gave me 60 wood and that house gave me over there gave me 60 wood, that's already 120 wood just without even hitting trees or anything like that. If you hit the trees outside of it, you can easily get 200 wood just by hitting a simple two houses. I'm gonna show you another example over here. Oh, here's a perfect example to show you guys. Okay, well, I guess I got a headshot on him. Sometimes you're not going to get the headshot, so you have to switch your AR extremely quick and then try to pop him off like that. But it's okay because we finally got a pump. So if this house didn't get looted, oh, we already have 999. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop half of my wood right here. So we have 500 wood, you guys. Now let's see how much wood we can actually get out of this house just by hitting furniture. So we're just going to run around, literally hit every single wood item that you can. Don't worry about the steel because the steel won't give you that much. But hit every single wooden object, especially these kitchens right here. These will give you a lot of wood. 
bookshelves those will give you a pretty good number of wood couches everything anything that has wood go ahead and hit it we're not gonna worry about the chest we're just gonna count only the furniture in this house and as you guys can see, we have 650. So this house right here, just this house without breaking walls or any chests or anything like that, gave us 150 wood, which is insane. That's a big amount of wood. And if you're doing this in every single house that you're hitting, you're going to have 999 wood very easy. And having material is massive in this game, you guys. You're going to want to have as much wood as you possibly can because especially in the end games, that's when it really comes down to the build fights and stuff like that. And if you run out of material, you're probably going to die because the the other guy's gonna have high ground on you he can play with you he can do whatever he wants because he has way more mats than you have and since we're talking about farming material and stuff like that hit, hit these wooden pallets i don't know if you guys know this but these wooden pallets give you a lot of wood for the third pro tip what i want to tell you guys is the pyramid now some people actually like editing these pyramid ramps to be ramps like this so that way it's a lot quicker but if you're playing on builder pro this does not matter you can actually use these ramps for a different purpose which is really good not a lot of people actually do this but what you want to do is say for instance I'm just gonna build a one by one real quick. I'm just gonna go up as high as I can Not that high I just want to go up a good number a good height So basically right here say we're in a build off or something like that and I need to get down quick But I don't want to sit there and do this and all the way down to the very bottom because that's gonna take too long or it, I could end up dying or I'm running away from the storm or in certain situations where you're not gonna be able to do that what you want to do is you want to have this preset to these front two steps instead of the back two. So that way it looks like this. So that way anytime you open up your mats and you go to your pyramids, you have down ramps ready to run down the hill. And then you can switch it back to this, switch back to a down ramp, and it's that easy. Not a lot of console players actually do this, but it does help out a lot. Having this set to an automatic down ramp will always help you out in situations, especially in the final match when you're you're having a build off or something like that and you need to get down quick. Cause say you guys have a build off in the storm, you end up winning, but you need to get down quick and you have like no launch pads or bounce pads or anything like that. What you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and set up your down ramps like this. That way you can easily get down and then jump and let the other ramp catch you. Not a lot of people know about that, or actually a lot of people do, but they just don't take the time to do it. And honestly, it, it does help out. It can improve your gameplay a lot. It's a pro tip for console players. If you guys do wanna become really good on console because we... Oh, hang on, someone's right here. Oh, she's bad. We're gonna rock the double pump. And so say like a situation like this where I, it's gonna be hard for me to jump down because I'm too high up or anything like that. Like I won't catch anything down here so I'll just fall to my death. Say we're extremely high up. All you have to do is put this wall up here and just go to your down ramps and just take your way down all the way down that that easy you don't have to sit there and edit or anything like that it's quick and easy and ready to go and that's part of fortnite you, you want to be able to have everything quick because even the milliseconds they do matter in this game because that millisecond can can change from you putting up a wall and them jumping through it or them actually getting stuck on the other side okay there's people over here fighting so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come over here let them fight let them get each other weak and stuff and then once they're ready that's when i can go ahead and try and steal the kill this guy that has high ground he's actually probably really good so i'm gonna just just go up there and fight him You let them fight it out, let them kill each other, and then you go ahead and do it. But you want to remain high ground whenever you're doing stuff like that. That's not one of the pro tips that I want to tell you. It's one of the tips that I do give on this channel, but it's not the pro tip. Now we're coming down to a situation where it's a 1v1. And I get a lot of comments of people saying that this is where they choke, this is where it gets hard and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you guys the best tips and tricks on how to try to win the 1v1 and stuff like that. So basically, I have no clue where this guy is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a launch pad down because I have two. Oh, crap. I'm gonna go find him. My goal, my objective is to find him. Find out where this guy is. He could be, and I just heard him place a trap. So he's right here, look at him. I can go for headshot, body shot, switch to your AR, and just light him up. And that's how you're supposed to do it. That's how these pros are doing it on console. That's why they're just getting a lot of kills because they switch. I could've easily got a headshot, but I wasn't focused on that. 
I was focused on showing you guys exactly how the technique works, but those are the best pro tips that I can give you guys when it comes to solos that not a lot of people give their fans and stuff like that, their viewers, just because they don't think that it's necessary. But these little things do matter, so I want you guys to go out, play the game, and actually put down these perspectives, actually do these tips right here, and let me know down in the comments how it helps you. Does it make you a little bit better? Does it help out? And just, of course, a little bit better is all you need. If you just get a little bit better every day, soon that little bit is going to turn into a massive amount of skill and you're gonna be better than your friends and stuff like that and you're gonna be able to show off and they're gonna be like dang this that's smart like it's all about being smart at the game but with that being said guys I appreciate you guys so much if you guys can please kill this video with a thumbs up if you guys can break a thousand likes on these tips and tricks videos I'll bring you guys another one so you guys basically hit a thousand like 200 likes on the last building tips and trick video so I'm going to go ahead tomorrow's video we're gonna do a building tips and tricks for you guys and whenever you guys kill a thousand likes on this video we'll go ahead and do a part two of pro tips tips for you guys on the channel but thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in the next video peace